Okay, so, so my name is Gi Kiong. I'll introduce you all a bit more, to uh, introduce myself a bit more in the next few slides. But I usually start with this, meaning that I need to know exactly what I want to do before I really, really act on it. And in my current case, a little background in a while will be that I am trying to write a little app of my own. But it started not because I want to write. <laughs> my professor had an idea, asked me to help him with it. And this professor is like way back from my secondary school. I stayed with him until now. So practically an old friend by now. Lah. So this is quite common, right? For me who writes programs all these years since I graduated in 95. So every time I write a program, this happens. I always assume it's clean, <laughs> but I always end up with some funny, funny, strange things. Because I'm just easily distracted by all the various frameworks, all the shiny stuff out there. This is common, right? You see new frameworks almost every, well nowadays, every five years I hear something new. Yeah, and five years is actually very short. Yeah, actually it's very long. Five years is too long, right? Nowadays you hear new frameworks and new updates almost every six months or less. Yeah, five years is very long. So my name is Kang. My phone is actually Kang Gi Kyung, but Kang is fine. And nowadays, if you ask me, would I rather code? Frankly, I spend most of my free time drawing more than coding. Uh, it's a bit more fun. In drawing, we say, you probably cannot create a bug. <laughs> <laughs> In programming, well, the bugs just appear out of nowhere, right? <laughs> yeah, so you know what I mean. Huh? Yeah, so this is roughly the agenda for the day. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you a bit more about my main objective of doing all this. Uh, what framework did I choose? And why I need some databases, some tables. How do I do all the create, read, the usual crud? Right? And then whether the framework I chose is credible or not. You already know what framework I'm talking about, right? Okay, so I'm going to tell you what are the objectives first. First, my framework requirement is actually the same as everybody's framework requirements. It is simply this. I need the structure to be clear. Clear enough for me to understand it. Uh, clear enough for somebody else to take over eventually to understand it. Uh, so we will obviously pick something that is very popular out in the market, well documented. Uh, and of course, we can separate the concerns clearly, right? meaning that the database is the database, the screen, the view is the view. Uh, the logic is the logic. Let's try not to mix them up. Otherwise, it gets difficult to maintain. And of course, if somebody has already done the code for us, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I just want to recycle it. So these are framework requirements. Then comes the business requirements. This is what I need. I actually need uh, authentication, the user, and I need it to be able to adapt to any screen size. Right? And of course, I need to manage access rights. Some users have more rights than the rest. Right? So these are frankly very common sense stuff. Now, membership fees is some business requirement that I need. Because my website, in a while, I'll show you that it is all about collecting membership fees. And this one is that if I want to do all this, of course I need my own database. And I do not want to just outsource it to somebody else to manage. It's going to be my own. So the truth is, somehow of all the beautiful shiny <laughs> frameworks out there, I chose WordPress. So I did question myself, why would I reinvent the way and all that, right? So this one is a bit strange. So let me full go through the whole story with you all. So roughly, the app will eventually look something like that. Yeah. And I almost decided, why do I need to bother writing an actual app, be it Android app or iOS app, or words I have to write on both platforms? I finally decided, why, why don't I just write a simple website? Uh, as long as anybody has a URL, they can get there. So, and nowadays, frankly, the website looks very much like an app already. Lah. So few people can really tell the difference, unless you intend to swipe left, uh, swipe right, and all that. And even that, I think the PWAs and the, the rest can handle that quite well. It's a matter of the GUI choices. Uh, so iPhone, of course, will look like that. The tablet, a bit wider. On screen, it looks like that. I think let me do a quick demonstration of what the app actually does. This is what my professor does for, his, uh, for a living, which is practically this. When you go to a website like this, you find that, uh, for, for example, I'll keep it simple, uh, it is about coaching you to get a job. Uh, so he's a career coach. Uh, he, apparently he coaches people of such high caliber that I never knew about. So when he spent a few hours with me and talked me through why I want to do this and do that, eventually I asked him, Prof, you spent so many hours with me. I'm sure I owe you some money or something, right? He said, you cannot afford me. Lah. 
<laughs> because all the people they coaches is all at the C level, and people will engage his team really at a at a very different level from what we're talking about. They may not approach him individually like like I do. Talk to him, say hi, can I have a few hours of the time? They will approach it from HR department and engage him. Okay, all the C level attend, all the higher management attend, uh, mid level and below. Sorry, <laughs> no budget for you. <laughs> Things like that. So what he does for all these people, the most basic one that he does for me is this. So for example, if we go into a website like this and you book his time, he can say, do you want me to do it for just one person? Or you want to do it for your whole company, all 300 of them, things like that. So pay for it, register all the details, agree with all my requirements, and then you pay for it and log in. Uh, of course, it will give you an ID and password, then you log in. Let me give you an example. If I log in like this, the menu bar will change, right? There, see the menu bar changes. And for the prof, what it does next is, he will tell people that you go into the list of what are the things you love to do in your day-to-day -day life. He never even talked about career yet. He's talking about what do you like to do in your life, right? So of course you choose, you type, you enter a few, uh, then add it on to the list, and you, the list will grow and so on. And after this, he will actually talk to you about what are those things that you're really, really good at and not just things that you assume you're good at. They will be, he'll be asking you about, did somebody ever tell you you're good at this? Are you sure? Uh, he'll really triple confirm, ask you to spend half an hour on this thinking through. Before he finally says, now that you like to do this and you're good at that, uh, I think it's about time maybe we take a look at whether there's a potential match or not. And he does something like this. He'll tell you that, oh, your strength is actually this. You love doing that. Maybe you want to consider a career in this and that. And this will be pretty much based on his own experience. But he's telling me that there should be a way to automate this. I don't know how yet. <laughs> I'm still thinking hard. Be it through, I don't know, machine learning or simple word matching. <laughs> I'm still a bit clueless about that. For him, of course, it's all in his head. He knows what to do. Yeah, but to take that information and knowledge out from him is, is a challenge for me still. But I'm still talking to him about it. Okay, but in a gist, this is what it does. It's a simple enough app to write, right? Any website can do this. Okay, let me get back to the slide. Huh? So you find that, <coughs> what kind of framework can do that? It's so trivial. Of course, any framework can do that, right? Uh, so that, that's a given. And in fact, if you look through the business requirements, like user authentication, of course Laravel can do that two lines of code and you're done. Symphony is just requiring it and then coding. Code Igniter e even easier. Actually, it's not. <laughs> this, this is a fake. <laughs> After you read out about it, you know that this is actually more challenging to do. Uh, and of course, the rest is all possible. Uh, that's my point. Uh, and if you look at screen size, so this is my bet. After thinking a bit through, then I realized that <laughs> nothing to do with framework. <laughs> Any browser can do this change of size and so on, right? Uh, so sorry about that. The business requirement to adapt to any screen size got nothing to do with framework decision. Nowadays, every framework can do this already. And this, of course, if you want to do authorization, practically all of them can do it also. Right? It's not a complicated thing, right? Uh, collect membership fees. Most of them is just a little link to a payment gateway. You get the services, pay, code it in, and it's done. It's not difficult. Now, then comes this. When I think through this and look through WordPress, I realize hey, WordPress, of course, can do all this. I don't even need to write a code. It's all given already. Uh, so that solves the reinventing the wheel thing. And this adapts to the screen size. Of course, WordPress websites adapt to any screen. Authorization, yeah, of course. Uh, this one, membership fees, is even easier in WordPress. I download a plugin and it's done. There's no need to code. Uh, so, Practically, I can say that that's, that's it. I've made my decision. I've chosen WordPress just for this. But there is a catch. A bit, a bit more. This. I need to collect my own table, my own data, right? In my own database table. So does WordPress actually allow? Turns out, yes, it does. So if you look through a WordPress database, if you ever have a chance to go in, you find that WordPress are very neat people. All their tables have WP inside, prefix already. So it's very clear. You just don't touch them, then you'll be fine. You can add any other table that you like. For example, I added a favorite, favorite task table uh, with any of the fields that I want. For example, the user ID, 
uh, the ID in WordPress. Oh, I, I have the match. Uh, ID in WordPress, my own ID, and the various, various uh, tasks that they are very good, that they love to do. Right? So this is my table. I can create it just like any other Q SQL table that you want. So once it's created, the next thing is, can I do all these operations in WordPress easily? It turns out it is possible and not difficult. For example, to create and then to create and then to read it out to check. This is the line. Okay, this is a bit technical, so I'm not going to dwell into the details. But the slides can be shared with you all later on. So feel free to just go back to the same link uh, for the meetup, and then you can read all this. But in essence, is this: if you're in PHP, this command alone allows you to insert based on which data table that you want to insert into. These are the data they want. Uh, ID is numeric. The name itself, the task name itself, is string, which is why I need to specify the WordPress that the first ID is a decimal digit. The second one is string. And that's it. This data will go into the table already. So this is that one line of code. Now, if you want to read the data out to check whether it's working or not, it's even easier. A simple SQL statement is there. Uh, so just use that. And then you can loop through every single one. They already made it into nim pairs, already, so it's very convenient. Now, no, the next question, can you update and delete data if I made mistakes or I want to change? This is how it's done. The update is the same as the insert. Specify a table name. These are the data that you want to insert in. Again, let's say the ID and the favorite task name. Uh, where do you want to insert? You want to override which ID? This is the key for the table. And again, you need to specify that, oh, the first field is decimal, the second one is string. And the date, the where. They even will tell you the where. The where is what kind of data. So it's decimal. And that's it. This is practically an SQL statement. Uh, in just a bit more coded, sexy, fancier form. And if you want to delete, <laughs> it's as simple as that. Delete this data from this table, and it is a numerical key. Decimal. And that's it. The data, the record will be gone. So far so good? Yeah. So interestingly, I would say this is really quite useful, but I'm not going to conclude that it's credible. First, let's run through the requirement again. So far, has the structure been clear? I think it's pretty clear. Yeah? But it's for, for you to evaluate for yourself, like, for your own purposes. right? So now this separate concerns, frankly, I'm going to sh tell you this. Separation of concerns has nothing to do with the framework. It's the programmer's discipline. If I give you a beautiful Laravel or something else, right? and you still decide to put all your views inside the model, I don't know how you do that, <laughs> or put all the logic into the view, <laughs> I also don't know how you do that, yeah. it will still screw up your code no matter what. So frankly speaking, separation concern, I should actually take it out of framework requirement. This should be a requirement for developers, for ourselves. Uh, so train that into our future generation of developers. I think that's more important. And of course, I do not want to reinvent the wheel. That said, I would almost conclude that once I know those are my requirements, I can easily conclude that WordPress is a viable, a credible framework that I'm going to use, which is why I started using it. Uh, so to be fair to the rest of the, all those frameworks, if you look through, you realize that I did look through all of them, and I tried Laravel, I tried Code United, all the, and I realized, wow, it's a pain after a while. And eventually I decided, okay, let's go back to WordPress. Can WordPress do this? And I realized, hey, it is possible. Uh, so all that said, I just want you to remember, there are so many frameworks out there in the world, uh, but choose one wisely. All good? Uh, so any other questions? We can always chat over pizza or <laughs> drinks. Or you all want to ask anything now? Uh, any questions? If not, it's okay. We can keep it informal. We'll chat along the way. Okay, thanks. Thank you.